Three. Hi, this is Jim Campanini, and welcome to the Gratefully Yours Wine Podcast. Today we have a special guest and a special show. We're coming, this is our first InsideLowell.com show from the, the sunny uh, west coast of Florida. We're here just below Tampa, uh, uh, Tampa and St. Petersburg. We're in um Anna Maria Island, which is just above uh, Longboat Key and Siesta Key. And I'm here with uh, John Campanini, my older twin brother. How, old, how, how much older are you? About a minute, I think they it tell us. a minute, uh, yeah. yeah. Not an official note in documentation. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he, uh, we've had John on the show before because he's one of the, um, he, he's one of the top of uh, vintners in Rhode Island. He makes his homemade Zinfandel. He's made eight vintages. And he's going to tell us, uh, we're going to talk briefly about if people out there interested in uh, making their home wine, uh, he's got the Big River a Winery, and he's Greenwich, uh, is it West Greenwich, right, Rhode Island? It's uh, West Greenwich, yeah. Rhode Island. And he hooked up with uh, with friends there and stuff and how it started off. So if you're, if you're interested, uh, but uh, we'll talk about a couple of wines in Florida that we've uh, seen down here that are very interesting. Um, and, um, so why don't you tell the people, uh, uh, just briefly about Big River Winery and how that started? Well, the Big River Winery is actually a, uh, lodge, a garage that, uh, my cousin Jason, uh, owns. And, uh, about 10 years ago, he wanted to follow a, a family tradition of making his own wine, his, uh, uh, grandfather and father uh, always had uh, table wine that they made themselves uh, from their own grape and uh, purchasing grape elsewhere. So he had called me. I had been making wine for a couple of years before then. And he said, why don't we get together and uh, make a couple of uh, vintages? And this has expanded from just uh, two or three people. We've got uh, teams of four. We've got four teams. And um, uh, we've met uh, since uh, 2013 to make wine yearly. We only missed last year because uh, coming out of the pandemic, it was really difficult to get uh, good quality grape. And um, we put up all together, the uh, 15, 14 or 15 of us put up about uh, 250 gallons of uh, wine, different varieties. Mm -hmm. uh, I enjoy Zinfandel. I started earlier with uh, some Merlot, and um, uh, some Cabernet, but uh, I really fell in love with the Zinfandels. And my cousin Jason and his crews, they put up a lot of the whites. They, they make a delicious uh, uh, Sauvignon Blanc, yeah. and uh, he really makes an exceptional uh, rosé. And uh, we have just a great time. Uh, uh, we always have uh, good food. We grill every time we meet, whether it's the uh, first day of crushing to the three or four occasions of uh, racking. Mm. And then bottling, we invite the entire family. There's going to be about 70 or 80 people that come down. We have a food truck that comes, and uh, we make an entire day affair. And then yeah. we just give up uh, We just give up wine. To, yeah. and, to have... and my brother said uh, it's a garage. This place is a is a, a, a top of the line luxury uh, uh, bond. It almost looks like a bond, but it's it's huge because he uh, Jason has a motorcycle collection that he used to have in there. Now he's created a museum on his property for his his uh, uh, motorcycles. But I've been there uh, several times. Uh, Jason brings in food trucks, and uh, it is. It's a, a very convivial uh, atmosphere. You walk around, you see the different people making their wine uh, on the, the different equipment. They've made investments in, in equipment and tanks and uh, uh, great pressing uh, machines, and they still got the old hand press. They take turns on the hand press. Uh, but... And we have women. We have a lot of women that assist yes. us. And it's, it's interesting because my brother's team involves his, uh, you know, some of his uh, our friends from college, fraternity brothers, and, and he's given everybody a job, okay. organizer. One guy's involved with hygiene. Everybody's got to wear gloves, clean that, and he just walks around making sure no one's touching anything they're not supposed to be touching. And then one one person puts the yeast in when the yeah. time comes and stuff like that. My uh, my, my top shelf uh, chemist <laughs> is uh, Tommy Shawnia, who. Uh, uh, 
couldn't pass uh, 11th grade chemistry, but uh, <laughs> we've taught him how to uh, be a mixer, so to speak, and he's got a very important job. And and so this was what? What, what vintage is this of yours in Vendel? Oh, this is my, I, I think my ninth year, ninth year with the Zinfandel, just pure Zinfandel. Yeah. Okay, so so you crushed and and uh, bottled already. That was done. One. When was when did the? It's... No, well, the, this year's vintage, which we'll call the 2023 vintage, we uh, started it back in um, the uh, last week in September. Yeah. We actually got our grape about uh, seven days later than usual. We've already racked it. We rack it. Uh, every three um, uh, three to four weeks. Mm -hmm. So when I get back in uh, March, will be the fourth time that we we rack it. And and I, I just want people to understand when you when you say you crush and ferment, that's when you're trying to uh, you, you crush the grape, you get gather juice. all the juice, and the fermenting process is when the sugar is converted to the alcohol. Right now. When you hear the term racking, that means that you're clarifying the juice because there's an awful lot of sediment that uh, accumulates uh, in the carboys uh, after you take it after the fermenting top. So that's a real important process when you can introduce certain uh, chemicals and enzymes. If you for for the people like myself that are further along in the process of making wine, I've no I know now if it's too alcoholic, too bitter, hmm. and you want to introduce a little bit of uh, what they call a smoothness or textural um, uh, enzymes yeah. into the process. And, and then, so that that ferments your aging process. Fermenting lasts for how many months? No, the fermenting uh, is uh, uh, ten to fourteen days. Yeah, so but you age now. Now we age it. I I do not like to uh, bottle for at least six months. I really want those tannins and all uh, the um, uh, particles that are in that juice to really take hold. And um, and, 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 and yeah. we have his. You talk about his his beautiful facility. Um, uh, he actually has the ability to keep his. Uh, uh, storage facility at uh, you know between uh, 51 and uh, yeah, temperature degrees, control. Temperature yeah. control. So so we've we experimented. I got to tell the truth that in the first couple of years, uh, you know our our, um, uh, our wines you know needed uh, needed help. Mm -hmm. But we mark, we write down everything, uh, and uh, uh, today we've got everything down pat and. Yeah, yeah, you've kept a, a log in everything. And it's else. a lot better. I have to say it's a lot better. So when will you bottle? We'll we'll bottle in um, uh, probably Easter comes early this year in May. Yes. I'll and bottle you, And you use corks, no screw. Oh, no corks. I use cork, no screw tops. And uh, I put foil, you know, the foil wrapper too on the top mm -hmm. because uh, you don't want to uh, get uh, too, uh, oxygen in at any cost. And um, uh I put a label on it. The first couple of years, I put my beautiful wife's uh, <laughs> a photo on, the, on it. And uh, uh, now uh, I've always been a Roman history buff, so I always take a particular theme yeah. from the uh, I legion. like the, the, the legion, uh, legion, uh, legio, 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 but this year, I'm, uh, I'm up in the air, and uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll have a little contest, Jimmy. You can help me with that, and uh, we can come up with a nice label. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, uh, I think uh, Caesar would be very proud of that bottle he made a couple of years ago, because I think that was one of the best. So the last year's was very, very good. It was a delicious. A lot, yeah. lot of cherry raspberry in it. So, um, okay, well, tell us about this, this bottle that you picked out to talk about today. Um, we, we've, uh, uh, this is a Camus brand. We, we talked about Camus a couple of shows back, Joe Wagner, uh, but we did not talk about his new, uh, his new, uh, uh, uh bottle here, new product, the walking fool, uh, Camus is in Napa Valley. Uh, the, the Wagner family invested in Susen Valley, which is, um, I think it's just uh, north, is it north, uh, south? It's just south of, it's, uh, of, um, of Napa. It's between San Francisco and Sacramento. And, and for many years, it had been uh, underrated because everybody concentrated on uh, Napa and Sonoma. 
where the land became very expensive. So the Wagner family started investing with some other um, with vintners in this Sus Susan Valley. It's turned out to be a very, very uh, good spot. And uh, what do you know about this wine? Well, uh, I visited an Italian marketplace in uh, southern Tampa. It's called uh, Mazzaro's, and it's unbelievable. Uh, you can get all delicacies. You can get sandwiches, and they actually have uh, a, a good selection of wines. On this day that I was there, they were actually going over the uh, uh, Red Tuscans. They had uh, uh, value sales on it. But I told the uh, gentleman that ran the uh, wine department that I was looking for a real nice Zinfandel. And when he said to me, he said, I got a real great Camus. And I said, really? I says, I didn't even know that they had uh, good Zinfandels. And he says, yes, and the price is really, uh, really good. So I says, well, give me the bottle. Show me where it is. And, um, uh, you know, the thing that they advertise on this is that uh, it's really got a um, beautiful taste of uh, a fruity raspberry. And I do like, in my own wines that I make, I love that raspberry uh, taste. Sometimes you get the strawberry at the edge. So I, I called my brother and I just says, uh, did you ever hear of this? And he says, yes, I did. And he says, it's usually yeah. for about 30, you know, $33 and mm -hmm. $22.99. I says, uh, uh, let's have it. Did you buy that in Rhode Island? No, I bought it right down here, Mazzaro. Mazzaro. Right down here in Florida? In Florida, yeah, okay. in, in Tampa. And um, uh, I says, yeah, let's take this and and, and, and try it out and mm. see what it's all about. Yeah, and I think they carry that in the New Hampshire liquor stores, and you see that in some local uh, 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 chains, uh, too. Um, so uh, take a look. at This is the 2021 yeah. vintage, yeah. Uh, and it's um, – it, uh, I haven't tasted it yet, but we're going to have this tonight. John's yeah. making a nice uh, – uh, chicken cutlet meal for the family down here, and um, we'll uh, we'll try this uh, try this out. Yeah, but we're going to make the chicken so salt and bocco. Salt and bocco. The way my mother used to make it with the prosciutto and all that. So uh, I picked this out. But there's an interesting story. You could see this um, picture of this gentleman, and uh, he's uh, he's got the uh, yoke on his neck, and he's carrying spring water. And uh, years ago, this gentleman would, would have been the grandfather of. Uh, the Camus uh, uh, family, and he used to just carry the spring water, take it up to the uh, farm. They owned a huge farm, so they honored him this year. They used to call him the walking fool because everyone uh, in the valley used to see him walking with this yoke on his neck, and uh, it's quite a glorious um, uh, story that they wrote on the back of this uh, label. So uh, something else to think about when you have your third glass of wine. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's a blend, So, but, but the uh, dominant grape is, Zinfandel. It's got uh, some Cabernet Sauvignon uh, in it, and uh, I don't know what the other. Uh, did, did you know I didn't, the other? No, I didn't. It uh, but it is a it, it is a blend. But um, California Zinfandel is very very interesting. One time in the uh, early 20th century, that was the number one uh, produced uh, grape and wine in California. Remember the white Zinfandel, which is. Uh, they still have uh, some of it. Beringer still makes a, a white Zinfandel. Uh, it used to be sweet, and then you know uh, styles and and, uh, and flavors change, taste change, and stuff. Zinfandel lost its favor. Cabernet Merlot took over, and they're still number one and two with Chardonnay, of course. Uh, Chardonnay is the number one of the whites, but Zinfandel in the last uh, a decade has made a comeback in California. Uh, more and more plantings are going to it. They found it. Uh, you know, uh, uh, resistant to disease that's better with the uh, the climate uh, that's now changing and stuff. So, um, Zinfandel is a great uh, a great wine, a great uh, a great drink. I always like uh, Johnny Camp's uh, Zinfandel, mm -hmm. but uh, you might try it. The Walking Fool and see if you can get a deal like that. Because one thing I've found since I've been in Florida, it's only been a couple of days. We went to the the wine store the other day. The prices are high. A two to two to uh, six dollars higher for 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 uh, wines that I normally see up north uh, and and Lowell and and um, and um, uh, you know New Hampshire liquor stores and the the chains. So uh, we get some pretty good deals back there. Although you know with the prices, uh, one of the wines we're going to talk about down here, uh, Josh. Okay, which which is one of the best uh, best selling wines in America right now. Uh, you know, Josh does the the nice uh, Chardonnay, which we're gonna which we have here. Get those glasses ready, Johnny. 
And uh, and they also do a Cabernet and a, on a Pinot Noir and um, uh, something you might try. I bought a, a bottle of the Pinot Noir and um, and also the Cabernet. I'm going to try it. Uh, we'll report back. But uh, the Wine Goddess, you see this? Oh, which way do I go? Here it is. The Wine Goddess, she just loves uh, the Joss Chardonnay. And uh, this is the entry level. Now, they're selling it down here. For fourteen ninety nine, back home you can get it on sale for twelve bucks, eleven ninety nine, twelve bucks, and uh, and and. But they also have a reserve. You see a reserve on the bottle, okay? Mm-hmm. It really means means nothing. We've talked about that before in America. It really means it means nothing. Although, um, although, although some people. Uh, some fitness put the reserve on the label to show that they're they they select grapes or they might be from a single vineyard. Okay, where this Josh wine um, is is a uh, you know it's it's assembled from uh, grapes from different different vineyards and stuff. So that's the thing to 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 uh, to be cognizant about because uh uh the reserve uh blend they wanted 17.99 so they charge you three dollars more but it all tastes the same to me and stuff so and, and this is why you always have to go to a wine store with someone else with deep pockets like i follow my brother's lead let him buy the expensive bottle and then i'll go for the little cheaper blend and we both have a good time well try this and t- tell me what you think because you know um I like Chardonnay, but I haven't been drinking a whole lot of them. Uh, Mary Lee, the, the wine goddess, she loves it. She cooks. Uh, she cooks with it. Uh, you, you know, and a, a lot of her girlfriends in the book club they 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 drink Chardonnay. Some once in a while, Sauvignon Blanc. But I've got to the point my palate. You know, I I, I like a, a a crispier Chardonnay more than a, a vanilla buttery uh, texture. You know, I, I just get turned off. I just can't, I, I can't even take two, two sips of it. Now, everybody's palate is different. And under certain conditions, gee, on a hot day, a, when, when you when you get the right food with it, you know, everything tastes great. But for the most part, if I come home uh, from a hot day on the golf course, you know, uh, you want to have a sipping wine. So. Yeah, I want to have a sipping wine. I've been I've been drinking a lot of Italian whites or or uh, French whites. Even the Greeks, they have a great white uh, assertico. Uh, I hope I said that right, to Teddy. Uh, but uh, yeah, assertico. I mean, it's crisp. I like the crisp flavor, the nice texture, uh, the mineral, the mineral taste that you get from it. Well, this, uh, this tastes is, this tastes a little crispy. I mean, oh yeah, I, this is why I like Josh. And I'm not um I'm not a big um, white wine fan. But uh, like my brother said, every once in a while, it's like to uh, I, I like to change things mm. up a bit, and uh, this is very good because, uh, like I said, I don't have uh, his expertise in the white wines, but uh, yeah, it's it, enjoyable. It's, it's enjoyable. It's natural. It's got a natural taste. You get some apple in there, not so much citrus. Right. There's but a little no. bit, but it's um, apple, uh, a little white orchard. Uh, you know the, the aromas. You know. And I could I could uh, take this I could drink this with fish chicken you know you can have uh, with pasta dishes with white uh, little uh, uh, Alfredo sauce or something like that so um, uh, Josh La Creme is another one La Creme is Hess, very good Hess has a nice one. I mean there are a lot of good Chardonnays out there the the thing about the, the uh, uh, Chardonnay it, it's so diverse I mean it, it's got um, it's got different profiles and you've got to be cognizant of that. But if you like uh, Chardonnay, you know, know a little bit about it. Understand the, that's why I tell people, keep a logbook. If you buy something, you say, gee, Absolutely. this is too, uh, 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 you know, it's too, it tastes a little sweet or vanilla, buttery. And, and um, you know, maybe you don't want that kind or, or you do. So so find out uh, uh, what it is that you, that you like in it and um you know and, and and several years ago when you and i were down in north carolina and western north carolina which is starting a, a winery industry we had a chardonnay that uh, almost had like a line 
Oh, yeah. They were producing yeah. it, and, and it was it did win a couple of gold medals at the Canadagua mm -hmm. uh, Wine Festival of, uh, in New York. So uh, personally, I'm not a big wine person, but um, it was mm -hmm. something exceptional because the taste was uh, so different. So you really have to uh, uh, buy something, taste it, and see if you uh, like it, and then you try it again. Uh, it's interesting uh, that uh, uh, I, I think it was a, a, a couple of editions back, uh, Wine Spectator picked their uh, winemakers of the year, and uh, the uh, the Josh Sellers, Josh family, uh, they were selected as uh, in the you know one of the top winemakers uh, for the year. But it, it's it's an interesting story. It was a you know it was a small family run operation, and they just made good wine right. that was accessible at a good price point, and and everybody started buying it. Just like when May Mayomi, the you know hit the market, that was. Uh, that that was uh, uh, the Wagners too. It was the son, uh, and he 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 did it, and um, and then they've expanded, and now they're one of the top sellers in America. Well, that's a real wonderful point because since I've been uh, producing my wine, I've really come to appreciate what it takes to develop a good bottled wine. Yeah, I mean it's except the process. Uh, if you really want to do something that uh, comes out terrific. And sometimes, you know, it, it's only as good as the grape. Yeah. If, if yeah. there's a bad growing season, you're going to have difficulty. And, and there are some wineries that have just uh, stopped producing for a year because they won't uh, ruin their reputation. If, if they don't like what the product is, they, they have to just uh, wait and take the loss. So um, it, 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 that's why you got to pay for it because mm -hmm. uh, some of them are exceptional and uh, it does take a, a lot of effort to do something this well. Yeah. So um, let me just uh, clarify because I got my Wagners. Uh, uh, I don't want to. Uh, Mayomi is is Joe Wagner. That was the son. Uh, Chuck Wagner is the one, and his wife uh, Jen. They're responsible, the responsible for the for the Camus. Camus selection, the Camus Cabernet that is very very good. Uh, the expensive uh, uh, Camus, and also they have the Camus selection uh, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. So this walking fool is from the father, uh, Chuck Wagner, and the family. Uh, Joe Wagner is now on his own. He's got Copper Cane, the Copper Cane company uh, that puts out Elouan, Pinot Noir, Bouin, and uh, and other uh, 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 fine uh, fine wines. But he he he's uh, so nothing. Uh, uh, I apologize to the Wagner family if I. But I next so. next uh, episode you can report on what we uh, had tonight. Well, well yeah, well, we'll report back on this uh, walking fool, but we'll also start talking about uh, maybe I'll, we'll, we'll, I want to sample a couple of rosés, yeah. you know, because spring is coming up. It's going to be warmer here. Uh, it's supposed to go up into the 70s. It's been around 60, and uh, that's why we got a little jacket on, but we're outdoors. It's a beautiful morning here. Huh? And sure. this, what do you think? This will go good with Eggs Benedict? Oh, Jimmy Camp, uh, you, uh, you're an Epicurean. You like that Eggs Benedict. I, uh, I think this would go with the wine bottle of Mike Pigeon. Oh, yeah. Let's have a little, a little taste of I know he loves this because he likes his wood wine, but this is the Mr. Pigeon. Yeah, my my co my normal co-host couldn't. He wanted to stay back in Lowell and shovel snow. So that's where he is. But uh, we, we're going to enjoy the next uh, month here right. and uh, be drinking a little wine, but having some good food. And if my brother invites me back, we'll not only uh, talk a little bit about the uh, Camus Walking Fool, but maybe I'll give you my recipe for the. Uh, well, salt and bark, I'm going to make that. <laughs> well, I hope so. All right. So uh, from uh, sunny and, and warming up Florida, uh, may the wine be with you until next Tuesday. Thank you. <clears throat>